So in this video, we'll be looking at the order Anura. This is our friends and allies, the frogs and toads of the world. This is a famous frog from fantasy, myth, and legend. Moving on. So a couple things about frogs before we talk about their, their carnivory. There are 4,800 species in this order. This is 85% of all amphibians. So more than likely, if you were thinking of an amphibian, you were thinking of a frog or a toad. All of them are carnivorous. Basically, they can eat anything they will fit in their mouths, as this mouse has just discovered. A, they eat their food whole, and they swallow them and just kind of sits there. Most of this order have a short body with no tail. Their tail kind of melts into their body as they change into adulthood. As far as their range, they range mostly, as you can see, in the tropical areas. But in general, they are found all over the world. There's white Greenland again. Never gets any color on it. And nor does Antarctica. But you can see lots of frogs in the Antarctica. But there are, not Antarctica, in the rainforest. But there's lots of frogs up here too. Or not lots, just some. So you ha there's frogs all over the place. <clears throat> and so in general, the difference between a frog and a toad is their skin and their leg length, usually. Frogs are more of a jumpers and so they have longer legs and their skin is usually smoother less warty whereas a toad has more of the warty skin shorter squatter looking you've seen this guy in your backyard more than likely probably not that specific frog but a frog like it and um All right, had to pause for an announcement there. No idea what I was saying previous, unfortunately. But frogs typically are more aquatic, and toads are more uh, terrestrial, though both types are tied to water, absolutely. And they have to lay their eggs in the water, which we'll talk about as we go on. So a couple things about their body plan. Again, stout body. They have protruding eyes, as you can see here, which means the eyes actually go out of and above the skull. Most of them have three sets of eyelids. This is uh, for seeing underwater, for being able to see above water, and closing the eye altogether. Most of them have a split tongue as well that is designed and used for catching prey. It's a sticky kind of tongue, and so they can lash out with their tongue and bring prey directly into their mouths. This would be of most amphibians, actually. They have this kind of tongue. Not necessarily Sicilians, but salamanders and newts are going to have this sort of thing as well. The limbs are usually folded under the body, as you can see here. Um, their, long, their hind legs, of course, are longer and used for jumping. Large muscles, most of their, or a lot of their muscle mass as a whole body is found in their hind legs. And they're usually webbed for swimming. Uh, some frogs have padded surfaces on their uh, feet in order to climb trees, like tree frogs. And even some have special surfaces or special uh, foot structures for digging. I may have a picture of that later. I don't think I do, but so they're called spade frogs because they literally have a little thing on their foot for digging. Their skin, there's their limbs. You can see most of the musculature there in the hind legs. Their skin is glandular. It could be smooth or warty, either one. Uh, the purpose of the skin, obviously, is very similar among all organisms. It helps to control uh, body temperature. Sometimes the color of the skin is actually essential in doing this to either absorb the sunlight or to reflect it. Uh, the skin is there to absorb 
water to keep the skin moist so that respiration can continue to happen through the skin. With frogs and toads, you have some that are going to be more camo, kind of like these guys here. They're going to rely on their camouflage in order to stay safe. And then you have others that we've seen in other videos or other pictures that are more aposematic. And so they have the bright colors in order to say, stay away from me. <coughs> Frogs have something called an external tympanum, which is what you see here. It's less pronounced on this little guy, but you can see it really big and bright on this green frog. And that is their ear. Uh, tympanum is like an eardrum. And so they're able to hear. Most of them have teeth as well. I don't think I have a good frog tooth picture. But the purpose of the teeth is not for chewing or anything like that, but for holding their prey in once the prey have been gobbled. That mouse knows about those teeth right now, for sure. And as far as distribution, we've talked a little bit about this already. All continents except Antarctica have uh, frogs and toads. Uh, some of them even inhabit the desert, as you can see, the one there on the left, that little guy's called the desert rain frog. And uh, it's because when he, when it rains, he comes out and the rest of the time he basically creates a little cocoon made out of mucus in order to survive. Uh, some can freeze, as we've, we watched the video of the wood frog that freezes and he is able to thaw out when it gets warmer and come back to life as a result of that thawing process.